folks, this is Kelly James Parker. You're watching Spotlight on the Ozarks. Tonight, my guest is a local theater uh, director, and I believe an actor. His name is Tom Brown. So don't go away. We're going to go to commercial, come back, and we'll be talking with Tom, and we have another guest. We'll be right back. Here we are at JR's, and we've got lots of boots. You want wild and crazy? Or we've got nice, brown, traditional boots for that good old cowboy. Come on in. You can not only find great western wear at JR's, but you can find great CDs by Kelly Lee James. My best day. He's an old rock rider, just an old bullfighter. Lord, I watched him. Hey, I'm Rick Vaughn from Junction Production, and I can help you with all your music and video projects. Whether you're a musician and ready to try a music video, or a songwriter and looking for someone to record your song, I can help. Or if you have a business and would like to promote it on Facebook, or if you're having a special event and would like a keepsake video, give me a call at 417-214-3812 or message me. Please check out Junction Production on Facebook. And we're back with our special guest tonight, and his name is Tom Brown. Tom, good to have you on. Kelly, pleasure to be here. Yes, sir. Now, uh, you got to tell me, uh, what do you do? You're a director? Uh, I'm a director. I've acted in some plays at Stone's Throw Dinner Theater in Carthage. And, Stone's uh, Throw. I was informed it was Stone's Throw, throw. not... Uh, Stone's Corner. Stone's Corner. Not it's not. Stone's that's, Corner. that's over in Joplin or Webb City. Yeah, that's, I've been there. There's no dinner theater there. There's not. There's a Sonic. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. So, <laughs> so I suppose you could bring your phone and have a foot long. I don't know. I, you know, have, have, we could do a yeah. show. Yes, yeah. we could. Well, okay. Now, how long have you been at the theater? Well, uh, first step foot in place 11 years ago this Christmas, or this October, I guess, mm -hmm. um, to see a play and got uh, interested in, in performing and, and uh, auditioned for the Christmas play, which followed, and got a few small parts in that, the Christmas story, you know, put your eye out, kid, uh -huh, yeah. and uh, just haven't stopped going. What, um, what part did you play in the, the first play you had? I had four parts. I was, I had two parts off stage where I just voiced, you know, yelled, I think the leg lamp in the window, I yelled oh. something about the leg lamp in the window. Okay. Um, I delivered the leg lamp. I was the deliveryman for the leg lamp. And then I did a, uh, I, did, I read the secret r uh, radio code on stage. Came out and, you know, did this Gary Owens number. And, right. And, um, uh, and did that. So I had four little parts in that. And then um, after that, I was in Dial M for Murder. I was a guy who got uh, got killed trying to kill the woman, if you're familiar with the movie. And then uh, after that was a play called Jake's Women, which was my third play ever uh, since high school. And I ended up um, in a roundabout way getting the lead. And I was on all 101 pages of the script. So I jumped from four little parts in my first play to not leaving the stage in my third place. So, wow. and since then it's varied a lot, you know, different things, yeah. comedies, dramas. Um, most recently, my favorite play would have been uh, uh, Death of a Salesman. Okay. Uh, played Willie Loman. I was really excited about that. Cool. So. Uh, I want to ask you next is, you s was talking about uh, the guy off of, uh, what was it, he used to hold his... Oh, Gary Owens, yeah, yeah laughing. Yeah, laughing. Yeah. What kind of shows did you watch when you were young that, that geared you into wanting to, to follow this? I don't know that, that anyone in particular did. Um, I suppose you could ask my sisters and my mother, and they'd tell you I've always been a bit of a ham. Yeah. Uh, people who know me personally wouldn't say that about me. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I just, when we went to that play, we went to see Driving Miss Daisy, and I was looking at the playbill and just said to my wife, I think I'm going to come out and, you know, audition, see what happens. And, wow. and so I just took an instant liking to it, and, and uh, I first stepped into directing Shoes with Oliver, um, which has been dubbed the worst play ever done at Stone's Throw Dinner Theater, I really? might add, yes. Really? And it was all because of my great director, director, oh, no. directorial well, talents. But, you, well, you were but, hacked. Uh, yes, I, hacked. I, was, I was. I was hacked. <laughs> but, uh, and then uh, most recently I did a, uh, a play called Mind Over Matt, um, 
and we're going to be talking to one of the one of the uh, actors in that play here in a little while. Okay. So. Yeah. So when you first started at the theater, you you were just, you were an actor. Mm -hmm. How far into it um, was it till you started directing? I would say that probably it was a uh, probably a couple of years before I uh, directed Oliver. Okay. Uh, I just never really thought much about directing, but the more I was around it and watched some other people, I thought it would be interesting, and yeah. and I did want to kind of spread my wings a little bit and do a little, you know, a few different things that involved in theater, yeah. and so I decided to take that on. I hope that I've gotten better since Oliver. Um, <laughs> I've got one coming up in October, which I think is really going to be hilarious, uh, called the Savannah Sipping Society, yeah. and so I, you know, when I ask myself, would you rather direct or act? It's really hard for me to answer that because I, know that I have and I have gotten a little pickier about the roles that I want to audition for because there's so much time involved, so much yeah. work involved in yeah. them that I think at this point, I mean, there, there was a time when some, somebody would say, hey, Tom, you want to be in my play? And I wouldn't care what it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I'll be in your play, yeah. you know. And um, I kind of want to pick what I consider the the, the Better roles for me. For you, know? that's yeah. that's what it's yeah. that's what it comes down to. I think after you're into it for a while, um, it's like you say you, you would take any role, yeah. you know, offer. So yeah, I'll, I'll I'll play Uncle Sam or I'll play whatever. <laughs> I'll play Aunt Lucy. I don't care. Dress me up. But then it kind of gets to where what what do I do the best? And then that's the kind of part you try to stay with. Yeah, and and I really um, the last play I was in was a, th call, a play called Things My Mother Taught Me. Mm -hmm. And I had a very small role. Um, I auditioned for a bigger role, but after I got the smaller role, I was really happy because I, th I think the character fit me better. It was something pretty far from what it was. It was strictly a comedic role, right. and and I'd never really done a, a straight, absolute comedic role. I always sort of did a comedy drama or a st straight serious drama like Death of a Salesman, right. which I really loved doing those roles. But I found myself really enjoying. Uh, the role of Max in that play, okay. and uh, so it's it's got to be fun, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, my number one rule in life is have fun, right? And if you can't have fun doing anything, you shouldn't be involved in it. But so far, I've had fun just about everything I've done. Like I said, I I was in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and I certainly don't want to demean any part of that play. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really audition for that play, but. As often happens at Stone's Throw, they don't get enough people to audition, so they start reaching out. And so a friend of mine said, hey, Tom, we need a Grandpa Joe. Mm -hmm. And I said, I really don't want to be, I don't want to spend that much time on a play right now. I just really don't. Well, it's only a few. So I talked to the director. She said, well, it's only a few lines, not many lines, and you won't have to be at rehearsal every night and all that. <laughs> so I said, okay, fine, I'll do it. Well, then I go home and tell my wife I'm going to be Grandpa Joe. And she says, have you ever seen Charlie in the Chocolate Factory? I said, No. <laughs> She said, Grandpa Joe is in every scene. I was on stage the whole time okay. with Charlie running around. I didn't have that many lines, yeah. but I was on stage every yeah. minute. And so, again, do your homework, Tom, has my, been my mantra since then. <laughs> yes, yeah, I can understand that. Uh, how about, uh, are you in any of your shows that you direct and, in, and you act too? No, uh, they tend to want to stay away from that yes. uh, stone's throw and I've learned uh, over the years that that's not a good idea because yeah. I was in Othello and and um, the director was played Othello and there were some scenes that he and I were in that just weren't working mm -hmm. and finally mm -hmm. one of the other actors said hey do you mind if I step back and watch and make some suggestions yeah and he said, sure, and it just all turned out so much better because you have to have that yeah. director's eye. You that's have to have somebody yeah. watching and saying, that's not working, yeah. you know. I try, yeah, I, I'm i limited to our other shows that we do. I'm limited to actors also. I'm, a lot of times I'm in something and I'm trying to direct it, and it's right. tough. Yeah, it is. But when I just direct a show whenever I can and I got my actors in place, the best shows I've ever done, I stayed out of. Right, Because yeah. I was directed, right. you know. <coughs> right. So, um, and, you're talking I, about I, actors, uh, real quick, talking about sure. actors. Uh, shortage of actors. Um, you still have that going, or is there people out there in the Carthage, Missouri area that if they want to try out, can they? Oh, absolutely. It's getting better. We really are. I'll tell you, one of the hardest parts for me as a director 
is to, after audition, say, I'm sorry, Kelly, but you didn't get the part. That's right. the hardest part yeah. for me. Um, well, I would expect that. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, Tom. I know, uh, Tom. You didn't have to call yeah. me. Just send me a message on Facebook. <laughs> By the way, Tom, I sent you a friend request, and you've never answered it. Well, I never met you, Kelly. I didn't know who you were. I thought well, it was just one of my many thousands <laughs> of, well, a couple of dozen fans. So, yeah. Um, well, now you know, so you need to friend know. me. Yes, so I will. You, you keep up with us, and we'll keep up with you. Okay, sounds good. Uh, you know what? Uh, we're going to go to commercial real quick, but we'll be back with Tom and another little guest here going to be coming in that came with Tom today. Another one, though, that you uh, are associated with on the shows that you do is Misty uh, Hammer. Hammer. Yes, absolutely. She played Josette Johnson on um, the, uh, I forgot the name of the show. It was mine, too. Uh, what was it? Uh, the Watkins? No, the, I, I turned that around. The Bentleys of Watkins Glen. She played the uh, Josette Johnson. She was the upstairs maid. I love her. I mean, I absolutely love her. She was in my last play, yeah. Mind Over Matt, and she and I were in uh, Things My Mother Taught Me Together, yeah. and I just love her. I love working with her. I think she's she's an amazing Very talent. easy to get along with. Oh, so. absolutely. Uh, if you was, can't get along with Misty, it's your fault. It is. Uh, she used to go get my coffee. I'm yeah. like, the wonderful. Well, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she never would go get, get mine. mine. Well, listen. We got to go to commercial, and there it is, right there. So we'll be back right after this. Okay, and we're back from those commercial breaks, and we've been joined now by another fellow right here, as you can see. And this is Tom Brown. We're actually talking with Tom, and then he brought along this guy, which uh, a lot of people know from the Amateur Backstage Theater, Quentin McDonald. This is a man that owes his entire career to this guy right here. There you are. This is a man that jump-started the career of someone that you're going to see on stage, screen. Wow. Uh, yeah, stay in. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, man. That didn't play as, as heartily as I hoped it would. Really. No, I mean, well, I, I launched a lot of people. It's hard to make those things up. No, it, <laughs> it will be good, Tom. I will have an audience cheering to that. Oh, all right, all right. I love that can the, cheering. The man. magic of yeah, television. Absolutely. Uh, so, what are you doing, Quentin? <laughs> oh, um, well, I'm... I'm We've just finished out the season on the Amateurs Backstage Theater. Yeah, and I, we won't start um, again now till fall, but you're going to be where? I will be in Florida. You're not coming back. Uh, I will be back seasonally. Okay. Um, uh, exploring options of the craft um, stage. Right. I, I, I had gotten into stage, which is where this man comes in here. Yes. Uh, and I'm uh, going to do a little name dropping, too. Go um, ahead. Both he and a, a lady by the name of Betsy Flyshaker are very good at honing talents and, and refining yeah. and stuff like that. And, of course, you've dealt with me on, on the oh, show. Oh, I have dealt with you. <laughs> oh, boy. Talk about honing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, so I'm going to be going down to Florida. Uh, there's a couple of options. The one I'm looking at now is to study at the Burt Reynolds Theater in Jupiter, Florida. Oh, cool. Um, it isn't just a you know community theater. It's also a school as well. Right. Um, and they have a couple. They I think there's Full Sail University down there too. Um, but basically, I'm just I'm going where where it's taking me. Yeah. You know, I, I may be back. You know, with nah, my uh, my shortage of talent. Well, no, you don't have hey, a shortage of talent. Just remember me at the Emmys, will you? I will. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm I saying. Yeah. <laughs> I want to. I want a ticket. I yeah. want a ticket to yeah. the, me and Tom will both be sitting that's right here. That's right. Uh, we'll be on yeah. the red carpet with you, dude. That's right. We'll be sitting here, and I'll take my hat off, and Tom and I'll be saying, somebody will holler, look, Dolly Parton's in the audience. 
And uh, I guess we can't cut that, so that was bad. So anyway, so, uh, so hey, are you doing anything with Tom now? Or have, what's the last I, thing you did with Tom? I am not. Actually, the last, at the first, the only thing that we've, we've really done together was, was Mind, Mind Over, Over Matt. Matt. Yeah, okay. And, uh, and it was interesting. Uh, i tell you a story on that. To dive into theater, it was really a dare from my sister. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, I might well, want to do that. Was that your first time to go into theater? Or is this your? It first was going? my first actual full play production. Wow. That I, I was in, um, and I read the script. Uh, I took the dare from my sister because she said, "You're acting all the time. You might as well just, you know, go out there and do something with it." Yeah. So I did. I uh, went to the auditions and I read through the script, and had a brief outline. And what was interesting to me about that particular play was Matthew Lane. Is this uh, what was the architect or uh, graphic artist? Graphic artist. Yeah. But what I was doing, I, and, and I seen that play. Did you? Yeah, yeah Jackie right. Kennedy. I came and I came that night and watched you and Matthew Story, another one of our actors. That and we had and Misty Tom Hammer. Hammer. She was she was in that as well. Yeah. Um, but we essentially and she's not a part of our uh, amateur backstage theater because she stays so busy with yes. other stuff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I should throw that in. There. Uh, well, anyway, uh, there was uh, four or five aspects of the of his brain. There were oh, different there, personalities. Yeah, yeah, five yeah. personalities, yeah. right? And uh, and I played the I played Butch, who was the uh, chauvinist, yeah, the macho pig kind yeah. of guy, yeah. you know. Yeah, I seen um, you. Yeah, you were good. <laughs> and but it was it was at first reading it on paper and then bringing it to life. There was a weird lull in the transition there, and that's uh, one lesson I learned was that it's just important what you don't say or do as what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that I was tell something... people all the time, because amateur backstage theater is really uh, acting uh, school, if you want to call it that, because uh, we have a lot of actors or amateurs. And uh, I tell them, just because your line's done, you're not done. You've got to keep Absolutely. that face going. You've yep. got to keep that, uh, that character. You can't just say it in the and, and I will say that the cast of Matt was amazing at that. Yeah. I mean, when they weren't saying anything, they were all involved. They were all reacting to what was going on around them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the different facial expressions, the different motion movements, you know, yes. Yes. anything and everything that it took it was good. to add to that picture, uh, these guys were doing. It was amazing. Matthew's story. You know where he got that old man character. He was cranky. No, I don't. Oh, well, yeah, I can see it now. This you know, I've never met you, Kelly, but somehow I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> He laughed about that. He said, well, I had you for a teacher. I said, oh. I was, yeah. You, you know, I, I'll add a little. I actually had directed that play about mm, four years prior. Mm-hmm. And because of uh, really, really bad weather in the area, we rehearsed for six weeks and got to do two performances. Oh. And then we got stormed out. So I always loved the play. And so I just decided on kind of on a fluke, really, to give it another shot. Yeah. And I had a really, really good cast the first time around, and I was really worried that I wouldn't find the same, you know, cast with the same skill level. Yes. And I got to tell you, I wasn't even slightly disappointed in, in what I ended up with. I mean, yeah. everybody owned their character. It was. You know, Quentin was just, he was a quintessential, mm-hmm. you know, macho guy, you know, and, and yep. Matthew w- couldn't have been a better old man, crotchety old man, <laughs> yeah. with everything that he yeah. did. And so, yeah, it, it was an amazing cast. And, uh, and and this guy, I won't say he surprised me because I saw something in him at auditions the first night. And what I saw in him the first night was that he was just, he was as nervous as he could be. Yeah. So I talked with him, I don't know if you remember, but I talked with him the second night before auditions, and I said, look, man, you can do this. You just got to get up. This is the hardest part of it, auditioning, it is. standing in front of a bunch of strangers that mm-hmm. are competing for what you are you want to do yeah. and and being able to bring that out in yourself and kind of throw all caution to the wind. And I think that's what he did. And the second night, it just came out of him. And, well, and from then on, it just kept coming out of him to the point yeah. where I kept trying to <laughs> ask him, will you just shut up for a little bit? <laughs> I have that problem. Yeah, I had with him yeah, also. Yeah. See, Matthew Story is the one who introduced him to me. I didn't know Quentin, but when we watched the play, so but Matthew said, "Yeah, you really need to have Quentin over here." And, th- and so Quentin came in and just fell right into the cast. You know, yeah. and, yep. but he does talk a lot. And mm-hmm. Sometimes, yeah, Quentin, we're, we're ready to shoot, buddy. 
Yeah. So we're gonna shoot you, Quentin. Yeah. If you don't be quiet. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see what's going. Yeah, I'm the only actor here. You guys. Yeah. Have we didn't even get both you the a chair. directors, the brains we of the outfit. We didn't even get you a chair because this is a real uh -huh. cheap. What's well, a cheap show? I, I don't yeah. know how I can work in these conditions. Well, to be honest with you. Read your contract. Uh, you're doing a good job. Read the small print, buddy. Yeah. Didn't you talk to my? You agent? get all color M and M's. That's it. Period. <laughs> we don't pick and sort. So, so a lot of it um, in that show. Once I got over that hurdle, uh -huh. I, I I think basically he kind of irked me or, or urged me to. <laughs> I uh, irked you. Yeah, yeah, yeah both. I think but, urged was not the word yeah, I'm looking for. I to, see, that's uh, why you don't write the place. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, show, go with your story. Buddy. Okay, but uh, to harness that nervous energy into something productive, yeah. um, and it took it. It, it still takes uh, I, I never say that I'm an accomplished actor at anything because I'm still constantly learning you know life is just all about learning yeah, and reinventing it, yourself it um, but yeah so then there became this running joke once I opened up you know uh, and I had you know uh, it was it first night or second night and I was saying where is the fresh fruit basket in my oh. dressing room and all this <laughs> stuff and so then alter ego Quentin was born and uh, and he hasn't really gone away but did you have he a says Quentin, room? Quentin you don't even have an agent I said yeah you're looking at him yeah <laughs> like, did you have a dressing room uh, oh yeah it, it was a group. oh yeah it was yeah at home. And yeah, yeah. I've come dressed for your part. Yeah. That's reminding. And I always put on our shows. It's kind of a joke, and uh, I, it says uh, wardrobe by our closet. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's, we just bring exactly. our own clothes. Um, Tom, what do you got in the future? At uh, and give a name again of the theater. It's the Stone Stone Throw, Throw Dinner Theater in Carthage. It's, yes, in Carthage. It's on Old Route sixty six. Yeah. Um, if you're familiar with where the uh, drive in theater is on Old sixty six. It's exactly one mile east of there. Uh, someday we're going to be able to say, if you're trying to find a drive-in theater, it's one mile west of Stone's Throw. But right now we yeah. use them as the landmark. Yeah, okay. But, uh, yeah, we've got uh, actually a drama, Betsy Flyshaker. Quentin uh, mentioned her. She's, she's the finest director at the theater. Um, she's my go-to person, whether she's directing or not. If she's there, I go to her and say, hey, Betsy, what do I need to do to better develop my character? Yeah. I love working with her. She's directing a streetcar named Desire, which mm -hmm. runs in August, and then I'm I'm directing uh, uh, what I mentioned earlier, Savannah Sipping Society, a, oh, wow. a comedy in October. Then we have our Christmas play. We have we have our eighteen nineteen season laid out all the way through yeah, uh, into June of next year. That's great. Now, do so. you do you just do plays that? already established or do you have writers and you write your own plays uh, well we've we have done one or two plays by a local writer robert denning uh, mm -hmm. we've done a couple of his plays but for the most part we stay with the, with the established stuff yeah. written okay mm -hmm. yeah okay quentin what's your plans where are you going i will be going to jupiter florida and studying um not quite sure i don't have it all lined up but i've got a general you know i have a destination well so. what is this school i mean it's an acting school it's a it's a theater and an acting school uh, okay. to combined. So kind of how long are you gonna be there? I'm not quite sure. To be honest with you, I'm just like it sounds kind of scary. I think yeah. you ought to just stay yeah. here. You know, yeah. I may all, be back. You know, all joking aside, I think that's something you definitely need to pursue. That'd be fun for somebody that that was able to capture a character as quickly as you did. And Matt, I've seen you in a couple of other plays where you just captured the character. With the right training and the right direction, buddy, this is what you need to pursue. If it doesn't work out for you, it doesn't work out. But if you don't give it a shot, you'll you'll regret it the rest well, of your life. That's that's very well so, spoken, and it's all for the love of the art. So whether absolutely. you make a million or you make twenty dollars or do it because you love it, you do it. Yeah, you know. And I know how much you've made at Stone's Throw so far doing it. So oh. if you make 20 bucks, you're 20 bucks ahead of the game. Well, all right. <laughs> well, we got to go to commercial. But we don't want to talk about what you've been making over at the Amateur Backstage Theater, because, you know. But I'm going to double that next time you come back. It'll be double. we got to go to commercial. We'll be back with uh, Tom Brown and Quentin McDonald right after this break. And we'll go wrap up. This is Spotlight on the Ozarks. I'm your host, Kelly James Barker. Here we are at JR's, and we've got lots of boots. You want wild and crazy? or we've got nice brown traditional boots for that good old cowboy. Come on in. You can not only find great western wear at JR's, but you can find great CDs by Kelly Lee James. My best day. He's an old rock rider, just an old bullfighter. 
Lord, I watched him. Okay, and we're back from those commercials, <laughs> and uh, if we can keep uh, Quentin quiet long enough, Good I luck believe. With that, Kelly. Yes, Tom uh, has something he wants to say to the folks before we actually end the show. Tom? Yeah, I just want to, we kind of touched earlier on uh, whether we have uh, an overabundance of, of people yes. auditioning for plays. Yes. That's getting better and better, but we always truly want to invite anybody interested in auditioning for a play at Stone Throw to come out and audition. You know, if, if you if you kind of caught the bug like Quentin did and said, hey, what the hell, I got a dare from your sister, or whatever your reason might be, come out and do it. I mean, we have a website, okay. um, uh, com and uh, stonesodinnertheater.com, and we have a Facebook page, um, so you can find the information. If you would like, you could call me at the theater at 417-358-9665, and I will send you uh, a letter with all the information and that sort of thing. Okay. We're also having a kids' camp this summer. You can get information on those outlets as well, and or call me at the theater, and I'm happy to email you. As for kids entering third through eighth grades next year uh, from any school, anywhere in the area, homeschool, whatever, if you want to come to a kid's uh, acting class this summer at Stone's okay. Throw, get the information, let me know. That's a workshop. Yes. I'll put all that information. We'll make, be sure to yeah. put it here. Uh, Quentin, any last uh, things you want to say before you take off for the uh, the acting school out in Florida? Uh, yes, there's two pains that a person must go through in life. Number one is discipline, and the other one would be regret. And I don't want anybody to live the second one out. So, yeah. Pursue your dreams. That's good, bud. Pursue your passions. It's not really my quote. But, yeah. well, I'm proud of you. That's okay. I steal stuff all the time and yeah, ride it. You got that in the book somewhere, didn't you? I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I see our time's up, so we're going to have to go for this episode of Spotlight on the Theater. Our Spotlight on the Theater. Spotlight on the Ozarks. I guess it's on the theater. We've been talking about it. <laughs> yes, theater. it is. Yeah. So, and the guest has been Tom Brown. Tom, thank you, sir. Kelly, thank you very much. All right, sir. Pleasure. Quentin, love you, brother. I love you, too. We'll see you next time on Spotlight on the Ozarks. <laughs> <laughs>